the Across the Pond NFL podcast. It's time for another season preview. We've had the Seattle Seahawks, we've had the Arizona Cardinals, and now it's time for the San Francisco 49ers. And of course, we had to get a familiar face back on the pod to talk all things 49ers. Back with us is Paul Hope. First of all, mate, how are things? How have you been? No, thanks for the invite, Andy. It's always good to uh, talk football with non 49ers fans, because for those people who follow me, I do do a lot of 49ers content. But I'm looking forward to this. Like you said, last season is done and dusted. I'll be coming back on your pod to defend my crown because I wasn't too bad at the uh, guessing game, was I? So no. there'll be people coming for me this year, Andy. <laughs> yeah, I will this year try and have a prize. Um, I didn't think of that last season, but I will try to have some sort of prize arranged for, for the contestants this year. So um yeah, hopefully you can um win your win your uh, crown again and, and um but I think something I think we need to work out some sort of way to even it because there are some weeks where there's more games than others. For example, yeah. I think you felt on that benefit where the first I think the first four weeks before the week five by week, every team plays and then the last I believe it's the last two weeks, the last three weeks as well. So I think I don't know how I'm going to work it out. I'm going to try and find somewhere because I think some people were at a disadvantage in that sense. I can't think even what week you are. I think it was week four, yes, because I remember I was in Cincinnati when I spoke to you. Uh, when he that's correct, yeah. When doing so... the Dolphins-Bengals game I went to. So, um, yeah, that, that's probably helped. But, you know, it, you won, you still won, so that's the most important thing. Like Others out in week one to three, so um, you still managed to beat them anyway. Um, but, yeah. We are here to talk all things 49ers. Um, just going through the main sort of off-season additions and departures. Of course, we are recording this podcast in early July. It'll be most likely released in mid-July to late July. So in terms of things might change when this podcast is recorded, people might come in and out since. But a time of recording, um, main uh, ins include Javon Hargrave, the defensive tackle, via the Philadelphia Eagles and free agency. Other players include Sam Donald, uh, former third overall pick in 2018 via the Carolina Panthers, as well as Cleland Farrell, former Raiders defensive end, and uh, John Feliciano, the former Giant. Then the main out, uh, Jimmy Ward, the safety, has gone to the Texans. Jimmy G has finally left. Uh, he's gone to Las Vegas Raiders as if he passed this fitness test. Um, Samson Evercom, a defensive end via the Colts. Uh, Emmanuel Mosley's gone to the Lions, the cornerback. Mike McGlinchey's gone to the to, uh, defensive tackle, has gone to the Denver Broncos. Aziz Al Shire has gone to the Titans, the linebacker. Robbie Gold has left in free agency, still without a team. Um, and finally, Tyler Croft has gone to my Miami Dolphins. Well, I'm not sure how much he'll play. And then the draft, um, not really many, many picks this year in the draft. Um, a lot of trades. But the first three you took were Jair Brown, the safety, 87th overall. Kicker Jake Moody to replace Robbie Gold. He came in 99th overall. And another one I came in was Cameron Latu, the tight end, 101st overall, most likely to back up George Kittle. Um, so for you, Paul, how have you viewed the offseason as a whole for your team? Well, I don't think any 49ers fan, Andy, thought we would go into free agency and we would snag the number one target in Hargrave. And yes, anybody who knows me, I'm ultra positive, I'm ultra upbeat, but you can't take away that Hargrave is elite and the fact that the number one defence in the NFL, which I'm just quoting the stats out there, anyone who was listening thinking, oh God, he's got that lad on from the 49ers. We were the number one defence. We had a weakness, which the Eagles identified, and we went out and made a big splash in free agency. Hargrave was definitely one none of us saw on this side of the pond. I was smirking when you were reading the draft list off because we did a mock draft a couple of days on the 49 FA for the UK. We picked Brown and Moody in our mock draft, Andy. So we, 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 we're claiming them. Um, a lot of hit, heat for Jake Moody. A lot of people saying you shouldn't have taken a kicker in the third round. But as you said at the start of the show, buddy, Robbie Gold has gone. It was too expensive. He didn't have the distance that Kyle Shanahan wanted in his kicker. Moody was arguably the best kicker. And the Patriots proved that because if we hadn't taken him, they were going to take him because we didn't have a pick in the fourth round this year. Um, a lot has been made of the Dolphins and what they've used, the packages that they got, obviously, from us for the Trey Lance. And we'll get into that a bit later. But for me, off-season, again, 
the 49ers went into the free agency. They went into the draft. We had some key targets that we needed to identify. I'm excited to see what Ferrell, the lad you mentioned coming from the Raiders, is another one of those pieces that was drafted quite high. Hasn't quite done it in the league, but if there's any team that's going to take someone who has flashed and has got the potential, then it's the 49ers. Some key pieces lost. McGlinchey, the right tackle, went to Denver. But again, he got paid. And we weren't going to give McGlinchey that bag. And that's an area that we'll touch upon when we look at what the 49ers need to do. Because a lot of Niners fans thought we would take a right tackle in the draft, and we didn't. It looks like McKivitt, who's only got five career starts, two of them at left tackle, doesn't board well, go on the season at right tackle. But the 49ers offensive line's got younger, it's got cheaper. And obviously, that we don't know who the quarterback is yet, which we're going to get into. Because as 49ers fans, we're used to talking quarterbacks. When you hit me up and said, do you want to jump on a pod? I was like, I'm going to have to talk quarterback again, Anna. <laughs> well, let's get into it now. Because I remember you did this podcast exactly a year ago. Um, we even made a TikTok about this where we were talking about the quarterback room, which seems to be every year for the last number of years now um, has been a questionable topic in in the 49ers fan base. I mean, George Kittle even mentioned it on a podcast. I can't think who he was on where he was talking about how it will feel weird not to be talking about a callback because he's, he's got so used to it every year, whether it's, is Jimmy going to play? Is it going to be Trey Lance? Is it going to be Brock Purdy? And last, uh, 12 months ago, it was between Jimmy G and uh, Trey Lance, who, of course, he gave up multiple first rounders to get. Um, and you, you were saying that it's his time they do know he's the guy and start the season, you know, that's what we we thought. You know, started the first two games, dealt a bad hand with that terrible conditions in Chicago um, and against the Bears, which they lost. Then you had the injury out for the whole year. Jimmy G gets his chance to come in. Uh, he gets injured. And then, of course, we all know what happened since you've been on our podcast during the playoff run. Um, Brock Purdy came in, Mr. Irrelevant, and basically outshone all before him in the last few years. He had a great few weeks. And now, fast forward a few weeks later, a few months later, you brought in Sam Darnold. I mentioned that before as well. And obviously, Trey Lance is still there, as is Purdy and Darnold. So for you, Paul, just what the hell happens? Because no one seemed to know who's going to start. I mean, Purdy seems to be the consensus. But you look at uh, Trey Lance, you give all that pick, all those picks to get him. You've got to at some point see what he's got if he's available. So just for you, um, where do you see what do you see happening in um in this callback room in, in the 49ers? So yes, everybody, it's Andy's fault that I dipped my toe into TikTok. Because as you rightly pointed out, this time last year, sat at home recovering from my own injury and me and you connected. And I was all in on Trey Lance, as a lot of the 49ers fans were this time last year. He was installed as the number one. He took all the reps in OTAs. The noise coming out of Santa Clara was he was going to take all the reps in training camp. And if you remember, Jimmy didn't even come to training camp, didn't even have a playbook. A lot of us were high on Brandon Ayuk this time last year because of that relationship he had with Trey Lance. And I'm smirking because you're in the Scott Fishbowl like me. Um, and a bit like your challenge last year was just luck. <laughs> I'll admit that. I came on your show. I went, win, 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 lose, 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 win, win, win. And I somehow... Got a good record. And like the Scott Fishbowl, I'm not the greatest fantasy football analyst, Andy. I love the NFL. I am very play with my heart on my sleeve. I will go top-heavy in Niners, as I did in the league that I did with you. But um, I'm smirking because of a lot of noise about Brandon Ayuk being the star this year and he's going to be the um, dark horse. And a lot of Niners fans are thinking, did you not watch last year? Brandon Ayuk was brilliant. But like you said, Trey Lance... We were all down in Leeds for the meet-up for the Chicago game. Obviously, the sad passing the Queen saw it become an unofficial meet-up. The weather was a great level. I mean, Justin Fields showed what he could do. And then the second game, I was up at the Candlestick Inn in Falkirk, which is um, a bar owned by my friend Brett, who's a 49er faithful UK member. And when Trey went down, Andy, we were just all sick to our stomach. Because, like you said, this time last year, we were all high as the future. I have non-49ers fans who use your show from last year as a stick to beat me. You told us, Paul, this lad was going to be the future. You told us this lad was going to be an elite quarterback. And like you've said, as Niners fans, we're frustrated because we haven't seen it. George Kittle, I think he was on with 
with uh, McAvee or Rich Einson. I've seen that pod you've talked about. He said he's had five years of talking quarterbacks. He just wants his man. And if you look at the way Purdy came in last year, you look at Kittle's production. Of course, Kittle wants Purdy to be there. He was scoring more touchdowns. He was getting more targets. The million-dollar question is, has Purdy recovered from his injury? Now, as you've said, we're recording this um, mid-July. 49ers training camp doesn't start till the end of July. Ironically, I'm on holiday for the first week of training camp, and I promised my good lady no phones. So for the first week of training camp, I'm going to be in the dark. But we'll know a lot more, Andy, by then, because John Lynch has come out and said that Brock Purdy is the leader in the clubhouse. Sam Darnold has been brought in as an insurance policy. You you had me on before the NFC Championship game. We were very bullish with the roster we've got. And anybody who's an NFL fan will agree with me. That game was a non-contest from the second Brock Purdy got injured. Josh Johnson, what, 38, 39-year-old journeyman. You're not winning in an NFC Championship game with your fourth-choice quarterback, Andy. So that's why we've brought Darnold in. But there seems to be a lot of controversy with the three. I can't give you a name at the moment. If I'm being honest, Brock Purdy looks like he's number one. Trey Lance looks like he's number two. Sam Darnold looks like he's number three. But come two, three weeks' time, that may all change. I mean, as a non-Niners fan, where do you stand on the quarterback issue for the 49ers? Um, I think you've got to be careful with Purdy because you'll know more than anyone else. Jimmy Garoppolo comes in mid-season. He won five and even five in a row. Everyone's talking about this quarterback. Oh, sorry, it's not what Jimmy Garoppolo is saying. This guy is going to be it. And if we're honest, since then, very mixed. I think mixed time. I think there was that great season the year afterwards, or the two years after that, when you know he made it all the way to Super Bowl Fifty Four. Um, but I think overall he has been a bit of a mixed bag, and I think that whilst Purdy's been great. I think we have to be careful because it is a very small sample size and we see a lot of callbacks come in, normally backup callbacks come in for a few games and their first few games, they absolutely excel because no one's got any tape on them. But I think given the whole off season, people are going to be preparing for Purdy a lot more than they were last season. So I think whilst Purdy, I think on a right now basis, I would definitely say Purdy's a guy because Trey Lance just hasn't stayed healthy enough to be given a test but at the same time, if Purdy isn't fit at the start of the year and they give the starting role to Trey Dance, albeit for weeks one and two, he has to take his chance now. He has to because if he gets injured again or has a bad game when he's healthy, they bring Purdy back in and all of a sudden Purdy's back to the guy we all saw last season, they will stick with Lance. So they will stick with Purdy because at the end of the day, Shanahan, he prefers pocket passes. He he had Matt Ryan in Atlanta. He wanted Kirk Cousins in the 49ers. He had Jimmy Garoppolo for all those years and stuck with him when he could have easily got rid of him many years ago. And I think, for me personally, I think they've stumbled across by pure luck and by pure chance, they've stumbled across a guy they prefer who just happened to be in the last round. So I think it is so interesting. And I think even Sam Donald, he was a third overall pick for a reason. You know, he had a great college career. Hasn't done it yet in the NFL, but I think that even, you know, Shanahan for me, this is why I think he's definitely my top three coaches in the whole league because he can make any callback look good. The system you've got, I think, is brilliant for any callback, especially ones that, you know, aren't the most talented. I mean, I'd love to see someone like Mahomes. If Mahomes and Allen were in the 49ers team, it would be, you know, 17 and 0. So I think he's done all, he's reached two NFC Championship games, Jim Garoppolo, and he's reached pl- playoffs after playoffs, you know, without really. A star quarterback. He's never really had a top ten quarterback, apart from maybe Matt Ryan when he's in Atlanta. And look what they did then. So for me, looking at it, I I think it's very intriguing. I think that really all three could have a case. I mean, I don't know where these sort of comments. I don't know who it was from. Was it from Steve Mariuski? Or they were saying where um they saw Donald was the most talented throw they've ever seen in in the team. I don't know whether you, I'm guessing you've seen so that. It, it was. Matt Miyoko, who's one of the beat writers for the 49ers, he's very well connected to the teams. He came out and said, talent-wise, Donald is one of the most talented throws. And I'm smirking because this time last year, Brock Purdy took some reps in pre-season. And the comments were, he looked like a mini Jimmy Garoppolo before Jimmy's injury. So you're right, all 49ers fans listening, we remember Brian Hoyer, we remember Blaine Gabbett. And then Shanahan came in. And like you said, Jimmy come in towards the end of that season and... This was our quarterback. I jumped on the hype train. I, I bought the jerseys. Then we had that magical run to the Super Bowl. But you saw what an elite quarterback can do in Patrick Mahomes. And and like you said, I think the 
The reason this is such an interesting topic for NFL fans, you said it better than me, if we had an elite quarterback. Look at what we did with CMC. CMC was the first elite running back that Kyle Shanahan has had. And look at the metrics. Look, he transformed every part of our offense. And that's not just me as a 49ers fan. Go back last year and watch the tape. McCaffrey was awesome. Could you imagine what Shanahan could do, like you said, with the Mahomes, with the Josh Allen? And, and that's that's the issue with Trey Lance. I think when Kyle looked at Trey Lance in college, Andy, he saw Josh Allen and he hasn't given him that time to develop. Like he, he traded for him. He sat behind Jimmy. Then, like you said, he got injured. And this year is the year for Trey Lance. As a Niners fan, I just want to see his win. I don't care whether it's Darnold, whether it's Purdy, whether it's Trey Lance. I don't think it's going to be a quarter by controversy in training camp because I think Purdy has put it on film in the NFL and not just in the regular season. Anyone listening, go back and watch that game against Dallas in the playoffs. Purdy was pretty good. Go watch the game against the Raiders where Purdy struggled. And the knock on him, Andy, like you said, is he's only had seven games in the regular season, a couple of games in the playoffs. And And that's right. And that's fair to say. And I think we're all cautious because we all jumped on the Jimmy hype train. But you can't go on 49ers Twitter or Threads or Instagram, whichever platform you're on these days, without somebody banging the drum for someone else. And for me, on this side of the pond, I'm a Niners fan first and foremost. And sometimes you've got to be careful what you wish for. Would I love a Patrick Mahomes? Yes, I would. Would I love a Justin Herbert? Of course I would. Haven't got that. And I'm not going to say Brock Purdy is at their level. But if he can play at the level he played last year, Andy, that's all we need. Look at our roster. Kyle Shanahan calling the players. For me, if Purdy can repeat that, but then equally, if Trey Lance can come in and he can be half the quarterback that Mahomes or Josh Allen can be, that is a scary thought for the rest of the NFL. It really is. I think that, you know, this is one of the best defences in the whole league and you just added, you know, a a great defensive player from the team you lost to in the NFC Championship game. And going back to Purdy, I mean, the whole story goes with Trey Lance is that Shanahan went to the pro days to watch Mac Jones, who of course is more his kind of quarterback. And then he just they just the whole I think him and the GM both fell in love with uh Trey Lance when he watched him. But I'm thinking now that if you got McCaffrey, who is a great dual or running back, I don't think you need to have a quarterback like Lance with a good arm because you've got a sort of a mobile quarterback because you've got someone like McCaffrey who can do it. So I think that really the introduction of McCaffrey as well as the rise of Purdy, I think have really even more impacted Lance's time with the 49 the potential to be a starter for the 49ers because the mobile callback, if you've got someone McCaffrey, why would you want a callback who runs? Same issue I think the Colts are going to have with Jonathan Taylor is that if you've got running, they've now got a callback like Anthony Richardson, but if he's going to run the ball two out of five times, then it's going to, really impact the productivity of John Taylor. And I think that we could see it with McCaffrey as well if they go with Lance, because personally, I don't see why would you need someone like Lance if you've got McCaffrey? Have someone like Purdy in who can make the good passes and you've got someone like McCaffrey who can make these, um, either catch the ball, run with it and do what he does. So I, I think that, yeah, I, I think Lance is in danger. But I think at the same time, I think that, I, I, I don't even know if, if there even would be any sort of trade value for him right now, because what what could you get for him if you were to trade him? Like, you know, the Falcons did it with Brett Favre all those years ago. Like, what could you get for him? Because he hasn't really had a full season since 2019, albeit one year is down to COVID, not his fault. But, you know, I, I think that I, I I can't see getting a first round for him at all because oh, no. what's he done? And I think that second round, I think I'd find it hard as well. I mean, even in the games he did play, he didn't do much, you know, albeit one or two games he played at starter. So, really... There's so much point. Trade is you are still stuck now because you can't really get a good value for him. But you're not also if you don't want to start him, what do you do? You basically got a guy who's given up three first rounders for who's sitting on the bench. It's um, yeah, I, I I don't know what they do with him at the moment unless someone just takes a chance, like a Tennessee, not Tennessee, like a Washington, like Atlanta, take a chance. And then maybe I don't know, but it's it's an interesting one with Lance if they do end up having Purdy as a guy uh, full time. What you've got to remember there, Andy, is the Niners have shown they don't mind doing a trade in season. So you said we traded for Jimmy from the Patriots. We traded for CMC last year. I still remember. I didn't see that one coming. Walk up on this side of the pond. My phone, which is normally busy anyway, because you know I run the social media, was off the hook with CMC. So I think the Niners are thinking at the moment that there isn't any trade value in trade. 
And you've got to be careful sometimes when you look at the NFL and you look at stats to fit your narrative. So David Lombardi tweeted out earlier before me and you came on today that uh, the average depth of target last year for Brock Purdy was 7.8 and Mahomes was 7.5. Now, before anyone gets the knickers in a twist, I'm not saying Purdy is better than Mahomes, just showing that what Purdy did and what Niners fans got excited with last year was the command of the offense. And we're going to touch upon one of the questions you asked me is where can the Niners go? If Purdy can come back and run the offense at that level and not make mistakes. And that's why we all turned off Jimmy in the end, Andy. You, you're an NFL fan. You saw Jimmy G throw stupid interceptions. You've equally saw Carl Shanahan take Jimmy to the Super Bowl and not let Jimmy throw the ball. The Packers fans grimace at that NFC Championship game where Raheem Mostart, who's one of my favourite players, still ran like 18 touchdowns in against them. Jimmy didn't have to throw the ball. Um, and I think as Niners fans, what we want is we want to see our quarterback with the confidence of the coach. And I think Trey Lance isn't as mobile as what we maybe thought. But I don't think Kyle Shanahan wants a mobile quarterback. I know he did well with RG3 in Washington. But you look at Justin Fields and you look at what he's done at Chicago, a lot of Niners fans wanted us to take Fields, but I don't think he'd be the quite fit for this offense, like you said, with CMC, with Debo, with Ayu, with Kittle. And that's why as Niners fans, last season was awesome. That journey we went on. The way it ended left a bit of a bit of taste, but we're all excited. We've got a good roster, got a good defense, one of the best coaches in the NFL. We just need a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that is sadly the narrative. But um, you alluded to there. The question I want to ask you is more about well, last season you went all the way to and it's a championship game, and of course that game was really a non-starter because you lost Brock Purdy early on. Some snaps you having was Christian McCaffrey was taking some of the snaps to quarterback, and it really was it killed the game because you know that that was well I looked forward to that probably more than Bengals Chiefs, and I I was looking forward to that game a, a lot, and I was you know I was really looking forward to this game, and it ended up for obvious reasons not going to how people wanted apart from Eagles fans, um, and you know you go into the next season, and for me personally, I think a lot of NFL fans think this outsiders as well is that. The best two teams by country mile in this conference are you and the Eagles. I mean, the Cowboys are probably teetering on just by the edge. I've teased it before in our Seahawks episode. There is a team I'm not giving away yet that I've got, I think, could surprise everyone and, and, and beat one of you guys. But I'm not going to say yet because I want to say that for our predictions episode just before the season starts. But you know, nine times out of ten, it's going to be the Eagles and uh, Niners, at least one of them. I'll be shocked if... They're both not, at least one of them isn't in the um, NFC Championship game. I'll be shocked if really, if that doesn't happen. So, you know, you're battling out with these two and you've got the advantage over them in one sense of free agency because you've got one of their best players on defence with a great player last year, Javon Hargrave. But we talk about callbacks, but in other positions as well. Like, what do you think it will take for a team that has lost a lot of games in the playoffs at this stage in recent times? What do you think is going to take for the... Niners get get over the edge, get over the line, and make it back to Super Bowl, which will be in, I believe, in Vegas this year. Yeah, so the the NFC Championship game was interesting. We had the official meet up at Elland Road, which the 49ers put on, which was awesome. I won the Ayuk jersey behind me, which is hanging yeah. up. So um, the atmosphere was electric. Um, I think that's the one I've got in our. Obviously, you'll see it now when it's out. Our podcast graphic. It should be there. Yeah, so the atmosphere was electric. There was a couple of Eagles fans there. And they were a bit disappointed that they didn't get the chance to go toe-to-toe. So for Niners fans, we went into that game, Andy, as the underdog. The Eagles were the undisputed number one in the NFC. Jalen Hurts had had an awesome season. But when I was preparing for tonight, I think our defence doesn't get the credit it deserves. I mean, we held the Eagles to 121 passing yards. And if it wasn't for some stupid penalties... Even with an injured quarterback, we might have pulled off a bit of a shock. I mean, God knows what would have happened in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. But Jalen Hurts was constantly throwing the ball away. And when I was preparing for tonight, I thought, I'll go down the defensive route because we've got a different defensive coordinator in San Francisco this year. We've got Steve Wilkes. Now, Kyle Shanahan was very clear that the new defensive coordinator didn't need to do a lot to fix the number one defense in the NFL. So they're keeping the same scheme. They're keeping the same coaching staff. But interestingly, they've brought Wilkes in. Now, we've been interested to see what Wilkes has had to say, and he's been very clear. He doesn't want the Niners doing the bend 
and not break mentality like we had last year. So if you watch the Niners regularly, you'll see that the defense used to give up one or two splashy big plays in a game. But then when it get to converting it in the red zone, we'd slam the door shut. And he's come out and said he doesn't want to see that in this NFL. It's a passing league. And he's going to obviously develop the secondary. We've got Hargrave in there next to Borsa. I think you might see some different blitzing from Wilkes. Under Ryan's, we didn't tend to blitz a lot. You don't need to when you've got Nick Borsa and that front seven. We've managed to keep nine of the 11 defensive starters. Um, I'm interested to see what Brown could do. We drafted him quite highly for a reason. Sammy Womack, who's our boy because Lee Gowland announced the pick, we're hoping that he gets a chance this year. But for me, the Niners don't need to do a great deal different. We've managed to keep quite a lot of the same team from last year. The Eagles have lost some key pieces in free agency, but they've still got Jalen Hurts. And most NFL fans will tell you, buddy, it's a quarterback league. If you've got one of the better quarterbacks, you've always got a chance. But the way when McCaffrey came in and the way we went on that run, so at the start of the season last year, I predicted a 14-3 record. And at one point, it looked like there was no way we were getting that. Then we we traded for CMC and we won 12 on the bounce. It was this magical journey. I thought we were going to the Super Bowl. I honestly thought this year was going to be like 2019. And it didn't happen. I was the first to reach out and congratulate some of the Eagles fans. I'd done shows with, with yourself. And they were gracious with me. And I was a little bit like you. I was disappointed after that game. And I went and watched the Super Bowl. And obviously, you can't take anything away from the Chiefs. I enjoyed the game. As a neutral, I wasn't really bothered who won. Um, I suppose it would have been nice for the Eagles to win to keep up our record of every team that's knocked us out at that stage has gone on and won the Super Bowl. So that's uh, another one for the stats out there. But um, we don't need to do a great deal different. But I think you'll see a slightly different defence. Um, I think a lot's been made our offensive line. I'm not worried about that. And I'll go back to the defence. When you've got Fred Warner, you've got a chance. When you've got Nick Borsa, when you've got Hargrave. And I'm smiling because it's like Madden. You shouldn't have that level of talent on your team. And we've got it in the windows now. And that's the beauty of the NFL. With the salary car, Borsa's going to get paid, buddy. In a couple of weeks, when training camp comes out, Borsa will get paid. And he will get paid handsomely. Defensive player of the year. He's going to get better, which is scary for the NFL but uh, as a non-Niners fan looking in you must be a bit envious of some of the pieces we've got on both sides of the ball because our roster is stacked yeah I mean I'm very happy with our team in some sense I mean I love obviously Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill you know I, I think quarterback we've got a similar situation in terms of you know even though I think to a uh, actual on the field stuff isn't an issue it's more his health and I think defensive wise I love our defense and the Brian Flores and I do think that it will get back to what it was before under Vic Fangio because Josh Boyer without Flores was not the same person. Um, so I think that with obviously with Bradley Chubb, Jalen um, Jalen Ramsey, you know Christian Wilkins, I think is massively underrated and hopefully he gets paid either this year or next year. So I think that it's but you know I, I would love and I like McDaniel but I would I would by far prefer Kyle Shanahan as my head coach. You know and I I do think I do think this year. I do think I'll oh, this is be fine the year when I see my team win a playoff game. I've seen this play two games my whole lifetime, ten or so years being a fan, twelve years being a fan. I think it is. I've seen this play two games in the playoffs in my whole life, and we've lost both those games. Um, I think this year, I don't think I think we're going as a wild card team, but I, I, I think this year, I think will be the final year where I get to. Um, and I, I was saying in the last two years, if if we win a playoff game, I'm buying a jersey of whoever makes the game winning play. So it was almost Zach Sealer last season. Against the Bills, it was almost Zach Sealer. But I'm hoping this year it's someone like, you know, hopefully someone like Jalen Waddle. But um, you know, even even if someone like Ali Kingold, I, I will take I'll take that and I'll go to NFL Shop Europe and I'll get an Ali Kingold jersey. But you know, by all means I would love to have Kittle. I would love to have, you know, all these players you've got. Christian McCaffrey, I'd love give him in our backfield to be, you know, so good. So yeah, I mean, you guys uh, it, it's really good. Now I yeah, I do think you guys deserve to win or at least make back Super Bowl once again at some point because I think the coaching staff and team is too good. Um, speaking of the defence, just mentioned it. Looking at the stats from last year, they were second in the whole league for yards allowed per game, total yards per allowed, allowed per game. Uh, passing yards, they were actually not as good. They were in, um, looking at here, they were in the bottom sort of 10, 15. Yeah, we gave up big players, even against you guys. I mean, me and you chuckle uh... As a Dolphins fan, you came into Levi's and he hit a 90-yard bomb. I don't even think I'd sat down with me cup of tea, Andy. And Tracy was like, what's happening, Paul? I was like, 
he had the Niners are getting beat already. And we gave up big players like that all season, so I'm excited to see Wilkes shut that door because it was worrying when you came up against the better teams and ultimately the Eagles. I mean, I say we played well against the Eagles. I know Smith, it was on the floor, but it was still a deep ball. And at the time, I thought, oh, not another one of those players. And then they punched it in. You can't do that in the playoffs. So that is a category that I said we've got the number one defence. I knew you'd have the figures there. So <laughs> <I did. laughs> yeah, no, I'm looking at any off second rushing yards and allowed. So yeah, um, kicking back to that game, we talked about the um, the Niners Dolphins one. I mean, I was in Dallas at the time, went to watch the Cowboys Colts and went to a place called Texas Live, which is if you're, if you're going to watch a game in Dallas, I recommend going there before the game because everyone in there is going to the game. So it was a great atmosphere. And when I, as you, same as you and your cup of tea, um, you know, I walked in and they, they already scored. So I basically, I missed the only, oh, no, that's, no, it was the second lot of games, wasn't it? It wasn't the first lot of games, was it? It was the second lot. It right? was the second lot. It was, yeah, 25 past nine. So obviously right. for, for us in the UK, 25 past nine is a decent time. Kids had just yeah. gone to bed. I was at work the next day. So it wasn't the strong stuff. And it, it wasn't a joke. Tracy brings me the cup of tea and literally first play of the game. And I think it was Sherfield took it to the house. And I remember the group chat going off it. And I was like, oh, and before that game, I'd talked about how the Niners needed to beat the Dolphins because you were on a decent run there. And, and a lot of people were thinking the Dolphins were going to come in. McDaniel was going to kind of give one to Kyle. And that was a turning point for us because that was the game Brock Purdy came in. Um, and obviously... We ended up winning that game and going on the run. But yeah, I, I couldn't remember whether you were back in the UK or whether you were on one of your wonderful trips around the state. <laughs> I loved I loved following your Twitter feed last year. It was like, oh, where's he at now? <laughs> yeah, there's more to come. There is more to come. Um, I'm hoping this year to complete the set. I'm only I've got to do so yeah, I'm hoping this year I've got a rearranged trip in September, which includes games in Arizona and San Francisco. Then October, late October, um will be I'm attempting two games in the same day, which is a challenge I'm hoping I can complete in Baltimore and Philly, which would be Eagles, Dolphins. And then I've got uh, finished off with the, for the Washington playing the Eagles the week weekend after that. And then in November, the first game is Raiders, Jets in Vegas. And then it's Brown Steelers in Cleveland to finish it off. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can complete it um, <laughs> this year. I think that the two games in the same day is going to be the biggest challenge. But provided everything goes to plan, I should be getting it done. Uh, it just means I've got to get the half eight train from Philadelphia, rise to half ten in Baltimore, game at one o'clock, 20, 20 past five train from Baltimore, gets back in at quarter to seven, and then game starts at ten past eight. So I'm hoping that, and it's all sort of, they're all fairly close to the train station. So fingers crossed that I can do it. But Judging by the trades I got last year, there will be there will be delay. I'm I'm not. It's no doubt about it. So I'll give it my best. But um, they're going back to that game. I mean, I dragged my friend to, we, to Texas to this place in Dallas where we watched the games. We watched a whole lot of the first games. You know, he's sort of he's he's a Buccaneers fan. He's not really the biggest NFL fan. He likes it if it's on, but he doesn't really care as much as I do, for example. So I dragged him through basically six hours of or well, four hours of NFL football, and then. I go for I go to go for a toilet break, come back in, and that's when I missed a touchdown from um I Trent Trenchfield, I wanna say. But um yeah, it was um and that game really I think out sort of, that was one of the games that ultimately killed our season. But hopefully this year we can actually not make it as tight as last year and take hopefully we can secure playoff football before before that starts. But it is time for everyone's favourite segment. It is the win loss tight section, which Paul was on last year, and we've had Seahawks, which was you know way higher than Javan, you know expected, and we had um, on the flip side we had Ollie Kent come on for the Arizona Cardinals one, who came on last year as well as this year, and his record last year was way higher than what happened. But yours, Paul, was actually very close, pretty much spot on. So you had a prediction of twelve and five, where the actual record was thirteen and four. So pretty good. So. You, Linking that with the fact that you won the predictions game, I think we should ask you what what numbers are on the lottery next after after your some of your <laughs> predictions. So I'll ask you what numbers I should include this Friday. That that's the plan. <laughs> we tend to do all right at this bit. This time last year, my good friend Lee Gowland, who's the president of the Fight and NFL UK, he actually said in our preview show, Andy, that Brock Purdy was going to feature. And all of us scoffed. We were like, what, this kid who's been in preseason games? And then when it happened, we were like, 
oh my God, we need to put the lottery on. But <laughs> I joked with Andy, everyone. When Andy sent me the schedule through for this section, I was like, well, this is easy. 17 and all. But I thought as a Dolphins fan, he's not going to appreciate that joke. So <laughs> don't worry. I have gone away and I've gone through it properly. But I would say that it is July and this has been mm. made before training camp. But yes, I have had a look and we'll go through the games and I'll give you my thoughts of where I think we'll win, lose. There's no ties. I'll get that spoiler out there. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen the 49ers tie a game. And now I've said it, it's probably going to happen. But I've got no ties on my sheet at the moment. Yeah, I'm talking about Dickers, actually. You had this great run on our podcast coming on the wild card round, the divisional round, where your intro always involved feeling pretty good. But the one game we didn't mention it, so it obviously you lost. So I think if you come on next year in the playoffs, I think you've got to say it. Even if, he, even if he's not playing, even if he's injured, you've got to say it at some point. Whenever you come on a podcast next year for any preview of any 49ers game, you have to um, say that. That's the that's deal, yeah? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the background to that is obviously, remember when Jimmy was interviewed by Aaron Andrews and he said, it feels great, baby. Yeah. When we do the 49ers Faithful UK introductions, that was my catchphrase. I stole that off Jimmy. So when Jimmy went and I nicked the Purdy good, and I remember doing it the first time with you and you quite liked that. So you're right. I should have done it in that Eagles game. It's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> so if George Kidd's off your list thing, that's the man to blame. <laughs> um, right. So week one is a Rose game against, we mentioned my trip before. Um, one of my favorite stadiums I went to was the, well, now called the Acrosaur Stadium, but you're facing the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road week one. Yeah, I've gone for a win in that one, which is no surprise. Um, I'm not underestimating the Steelers, but I've got that one down as a win for the 49ers. Yeah, we, we've mentioned before that Steelers, you want, to, you want to play them in the first six, seven games. Playing the Steelers in the final six games down the stretch, it's like a death sentence. It's, it's very much hard to win those games. So, yeah, good thing you got on week one anyway. Get them out of the way early. Um, week two on the road to the former champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, anyone listening who follows the NFC West. And I have a good friend who's a Rams fan who's told me they've written next season off. So again, I'm not even going to overthink this one. I've got this as a win for the 49ers. The Rams are terrible and we always do well against them. See, I've mentioned this in our previous episodes where I every had very NFC West heavy. We've had the Cardinals and the Seahawks and they've been very down on the rounds. But I, I still think that as long as everyone's healthy, that is a big if. We don't know how they're going to back. But Stafford, Cup and Donald... They still got those three players. I know Jaden Rams is gone, but if you got those three, I think their ceiling is, I think, definitely wild card round. And if they play, you know, one of the NFC South teams in the first round, I think they could win that. And I think their ceiling is probably the one playoff win at most as a wild card team. I don't think they'll win the division. I think Union Seahawks are way too strong. But I, I still think people are doubting them. It's only a year removed from winning the Super Bowl. So I think that obviously. Even if one of his players go down, I think that's curtains for the season. But I think if them three are healthy and fit, I think there's still a chance. But I guess we'll see. Um, week three, the game I'm going to, um, the New York Giants at home. Uh, yeah, was win, loss, or tie for this one? Thursday night football, prime time, one in the morning for us. We better win that one. So I'll be staying up to watch that <laughs> and you'll be there live. So, yeah, again. I know the Giants went on that run last year. Um, their coach was coach of the year, which was a bit contentious for all 49ers fans. I think we win this one. So, yeah, I know people listen think, no, here we go. He's, he's 3-0 and at the moment. But I do think, as we've touched upon before the break, the roster we've got, I'm confident that we win this one. Hey, and week four gets even easier. Um, the Cardinals at home. Yeah, again, I, I have a friend who's a Cardinals fan, and it, he just thinks... The, the probably worse than the Rams in his opinion at the moment with all the changes and stuff and I think we win this one again I think we win this one easily we won all of the games last year in the NFC West and for me we've got I could be stronger this year the Seahawks have got a bit better which I'll touch upon later on I, I disclaimer everyone I didn't say we're going 17 and all there is some losses in there but we just haven't got to them yet Andy week five um Albeit it's not yours, but it's most 49ers fans' biggest rivalry, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, at home. Uh, what are you saying about this one? Well, funnily enough, I have a good friend who's a Cowboys fan. That's why these aren't my big rivals like some others. And I'm actually going out with him tomorrow to catch up with the NFL. So I think we win this one. I think it'll be a bit close, like the playoff game. I don't think the Cowboys are a million miles away. I'm not going to come on here and say, oh, the Cowboys are terrible. But I, I think this one could be a last second field goal, or it could be like a pick six. I think this one's going to be a lot closer than people think, but I think we win this one as well. 
Can't wait for this one. Um, week six on the road against the Browns and everyone's favourite quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but for us, this one circled in the calendar. You know, I'm a member of the 49er Faithful UK. That's our official meet-up. So the 49ers are horse and an official meet-up. I believe it's going to be down south. If I was a betting man, I would say London is probably somewhere you want to be keeping your eye out for. But if you want to know more details, hit me up. Six o'clock game in the UK. I think we win this one. I think even if Deshaun Watson is the Deshaun Watson of old, our defence has got enough to keep him under wraps, Andy. Uh, well, if I don't know if you haven't seen, if you haven't listened yet to our quarterback rankings, I placed the Sean Watson in a very controversial place in my list. So um, yeah, do keep do listen back to that one from thirty two to twenty one. That'll give you a bit of a clue as to where he is. Right, week seven on the road again, second week in a row um, against the Minnesota Vikings. I always enjoy the games against the Vikings, um, and I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. Kirk Cousins will be auditioning to play for us next year. There's your spoiler alert, but I think we win this one as well. So I think we've, we've got tw- 2019 vibes at the moment. I think the Niners start the season well, and I think you see us go like we did in that Super Bowl run. But we've got the Bengals next, so this will be the one everyone's waiting for. Yes, because this could be, potentially. if if you, I think you know these two teams will be both playing in the NFC Championship game, it's the Bengals. And I think that people could be looking at this as a potential Super Bowl preview. I think by this point, the Bengals' nest injury you know, comes in and affects one of these two teams. It's going to be a game where, come to Week 8, most likely teams, these teams are going to be on just one or two losses at most. Most likely num- number one or number two seed at that time in their conferences. It's going to be a big game before your bye week in Week 9. So how are you seeing that one? and Can you get the win? I see this one as a tough loss, but I go back to not last season, the season before. We beat the Bengals in overtime. My man Ayuk scored one hell of a touchdown. And I think Joe Burrows is fantastic. Jamar Chase is one of my favourite players in the NFL. And at this stage of the season, Andy, you look at it, you think the Bengals are looking good. So I have this one down as our first loss of the season. I think 49ers Twitter goes into meltdown, our, our one loss. But we've got the bye week. We dust it off, but I do think this will be the first loss of the season for the 49ers. Now, I've made my feelings clear multiple times on, on this podcast that I'm not the biggest fan of Joe Barrow in terms of personality-wise. Love him as a player. So I don't really root for the Bengals that much. I'm not really... like I know most people have this sort of second-team mentality with the Bengals. A lot of people love him. I'm not really in that camp. So, But if they're going to be a team that, if your thing goes to plan, if they're the team that is going to stop at... <laughs> preserve, I should say, the Dolphins 1972 unbeaten record, then it'll be the one time where I'll be cheering on the Bengals. <laughs> um so apart from when they play the Browns. Um week ten, London's team on the road to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, this should have been the Wembley game. I'm devastated it wasn't oh, me and you were in I was communication. So I was so convinced. Yeah, we... We were as well. We we honestly thought with us having the UK market and rights and not being a game in Mexico, the Jags have got better. Um, I think this will be a tough test for the 49ers on the road, but I, I have this one as bouncing back after that loss against the Bengals. I can't see us losing two in a row at this stage of the season. Yeah, especially after bye, after bye week as well. I mean, there's, um, I think you look at most elite teams in the league, um, I think the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals, the Eagles, Niners, and I think that I'll be shocked if any of them lose after bye week. I think they were all because bye week is such an advantage to have, and I think sometimes you know, you don't, not, you're not guaranteed to win. Obviously, there's times where teams do lose after bye week, but those teams, I, if I'm right in saying, are mostly teams who are middle of the road teams or worse. I don't think I've seen many of the best teams lose after bye week, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments or on socials if I am wrong on that. Um, week eleven again to Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A couple of years ago, this would have been a game that would have been. Really exciting for people, for neutrals, for Niners fans, for Buccaneers fans. But Buccaneers aren't going to be the team we want new. Brady's now gone unless he makes some sort of comeback. Um, so, yeah, the Buccaneers week 11. How are you feeling about that one? Well, just before I answer that one, week nine is a perfect bye week for an elite team. I remember the Niners having a week three bye week. The other year, Andy, it was terrible. But the big talking point of this game is you said Tom Brady's not there. Nick Borsa versus Baker Mayfield. Ooh. I can't go for anything other than a Niners win because my friend Nick would never let me forget it. Um, I can't wait to see Borsa plant that flag. Not a massive fan of Baker Mayfield. Um, I'm surprised that the Buccaneers have gone down that road, but I think the Niners win that one easily against Baker Mayfield and the Buccaneers. See, I actually, I, I love Baker. 
in terms of person, personality. On the field, I think he... I think there's some parts where I think he gets unfestic, but I think at the same time, I don't really... I, I don't really blame people for that way they feel because he hasn't done it the last few years. Um, but I still think that... I do question why he's good back is because I think one thing he's had for his whole NFL career is bad coaching. And the one time he had good coaching was Stefanski, uh, obviously the one year he started under him, and then Sean McVeigh in the last few games. So... I do think that in you know, a Todd Bowles, he might struggle again. But I'm hoping he can get back because I think that he's kind of call back that, you know, I I, I, I get behind and I, I want to do well. So for me, yeah, I don't I don't see it working out there. Um now game we're looking forward to every year the least, especially this one is on the road, um, for Seattle Seahawks. These are my biggest rivals. I actually look forward to these games, even though the first five, six years of my life as a Niners fan, the Seahawks owned us. Now, I think we lose this one. I think we split the series. I think last year we were fortunate enough to sweep them. We beat them both times in the regular season. We beat them in the playoffs. But I think Seattle have drafted well. Um, they've, they've improved. I think Geno Smith is going to have another decent season, which is what they need. And I think the Niners lose this one. But I think it's going to be a close game. I think it could be like a field goal in it or like, you know, last second touchdown. But I think Seattle wins this one in Seattle as it stands at the moment, which as a Niners fan pains me to say. But I did approach this one with honesty and I didn't want to come on and be a homer and just do 17 and all. I think it's between us and the Seahawks for the NFC West. And I think this one's going to be one hell of a game. You mentioned splitting the series, so I'll put that down as a win in week 14. Um, and if you are listening and you are a Seahawks fan, we have done a Seahawks episode. That is our first one of the of this sort of collection of all 32 teams with all 32 fans. Um, so if you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen to it and you can find out what Javan had as his team going record-wise uh, this season. But, you know, in, in between these two games, you've got a week 13 clash against the Eagles, a, re- a rematch of the NFC Championship game we've talked about early in the episode in Lincoln Financial Field. How are you feeling about that one? As soon as the, the, the schedule was released, it was the one all Niners fans and probably the Eagles fans because I think the Eagles want to see a fully fit Niners team come in and see what a quarterback can do. Um, for no surprise, people listening, I'm I'm going with my red and gold rose tinted glasses because we lost to Seattle. I said earlier on, we don't lose two in a row. I think we bounced back with a win in this one um, and I think we silenced a lot of the critics. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to be Brock Purdy or Trey Lance. I'm just going to say the Niners win this one and the Eagles fans are not very happy about it. Uh, week 15, um, on the road to the Arizona Cardinals. Dep- <laughs> the, when you get towards the end of the season, and like you said, depends on, on seedings and player injuries and looking around the record, I put this one down as a win and I am dismissing the Cardinals at this point, which might be dangerous because in the NFL, all teams technically have a chance, but I just don't see them doing anything, Andy, this year. They haven't given me any confidence, so I've got the Niners sweeping the Cardinals this year again. Yeah, I think the Cardinals, for me, I mentioned it in our last episode about the Cardinals, I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the whole league, and I'll be shocked if they haven't got a top-five pick going into next year, or even two top-five picks with that Houston Texans trade. Um, Week 16, is a home game um, against the Baltimore Ravens. Christmas Day, there's a few of the UK faithful flying out to that one. I think my good lady would have made me homeless if I took up the offer to go. Um, Christmas Day and, and Levi sounds epic, unless you're a family man. <laughs> so if you're listening, Tracy, don't worry, I'm not going. Um, I love Lamar Jackson. I think he's great. Um, the Ravens are a strange team. They've got Odell Beckham, who's looking good from the footage I've seen. I've marked this one down as a loss because I didn't just want to come in and be like, the Niners are going to steamroll everyone. I think this could be a loss for us on Christmas Day, which sees all the UK fans crying in the Boxing Day because it's going to be a late game for us, that one, Andy. But I will be watching, as always. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, actually. I've not actually, I've actually forgotten if we've got a game Christmas Day, but last year we had one, 6pm. I was actually ill Christmas Day last year, so I, I watched the... um. I watched that Packers Dolphins game um very much not feeling hundred percent and um two his performance after his concussion didn't help <laughs> at all. Uh, that was well that was that was the worst person I got and I, I that day it was, it was terrible. So hopefully for your sake you don't get that same fate. Uh, and also it help help it might help us out as well with, with uh potential playoff seedings. Um week seventeen, your final road game of the regular season is against the Washington Commanders in FedEx Field. Win, loss, or tie. 
So last year, the Niners played Washington on Christmas Eve, which my good lady was not too thrilled about. So she wasn't equally as thrilled when there was a Christmas Day game this year and a New Year's Eve game. So Washington is New Year's Eve. It is a game at six o'clock in the UK that the 49 Faithful UK are looking at doing a meet-up. I won't be going to it because my good lady loves New Year's Eve. So that could be a game that I'm watching on my phone. I have a good friend who's a Washington fan and he'd never live, let me live it down if I said the Washington Commanders were going to beat the 49ers. So I've got that one as a win for the 49ers. Though I do think their defence is one of the better ones that we will face. Um, and I was quite surprised how easily we beat them last year and the game I, I alluded to on Christmas Eve. But I do think that the 49ers win this one as well. Yeah, I mean, that's... Um, having Christmas Day and New Year's Eve, it's, I think it's quite good. And I mean, I'm not... I'm not really the, the biggest New Year's Eve fan, uh, especially the last few years. I've been since COVID, I've sort of not really felt the need to go out as much. So 6 p.m. UK time, I'm very much open to staying in this year. I, I may still do something with friends, I don't know. But if I am staying in, I'm by far watching it. Or not, you know, Game Pass could be the option. Well, I, I say that. I don't know whether you've seen people this year are unsure whether with the zone thing, whether you can actually download games this year on Game Pass. Yeah, it, it does seem a bit crazy. Now, the, the caveat is I'm a family man, I've got girls. New Year's Eve, where I live in Middlesbrough, there's like a family-friendly event that goes on so you can bring the kids. Mm. And to Tracy, she loves New Year's Eve, but I have already warned her that I'll have my phone. But like you said, that was pre Diaz or then, or however you pronounce it, but it'll be a big loss if the change... I mean, I know Game Pass had its critics, but that was one of the advantages. Like, I know when I'm travelling to London for the meetup. Last year, I downloaded all the games on my iPad. Put your headphones in, you're watching your NFL. But I think they're, they're moving towards more streaming platform. But I don't know about you, but I've seen so much online. Uh, I'm just trying to kind of wait and see closer till... I think it's the 1st of August it renews. So I'm going to wait till then and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I press all to renew. So I'm hoping that's going to be going through. But, you know, the downloaded thing was the, be the best thing about it. You know, People always say about you know, that, that question about things you couldn't live without. And that is one of them because so many times, I remember, you know, I was in Milan last season, no, two seasons ago during the season. And I remember watching all the games the next morning on my flight home. I remember being in Newcastle uh, in January this year where, you know, I it was the day before, um, actually my birthday, funny enough, it was Chiefs, Raiders and T Titans, Jags, week 17, no, week 18 on the Saturday night. I remember a long, like a seven hour journey home. I remember watching both those games, not knowing the score. So, and a lot of times, you know, well, when I have before I start working from home, when I was commuting to work, I'd often have it on on the journey up on the train or the bus. I, you know, I'd have it on, you know, I'd watch it in university to like, you know, in the morning, download, download the 1 a.m. game, watch it next morning, download it just in case internet goes down. And there you are. So I think if they are to lose that as a UK fan base, Albeit I was, I think we get it better than the US do. So we, we should be grateful for whatever we get. But at the same time, I, I do worry about that. I think there's a lot of fans that, because I'm not a night person, I really struggle to stay at past midnight a lot of days, especially the older I'm getting. So it's um, it'll be a shame to have, to have have to actually stay up and watch games now and be absolutely knackered the next day. Because normally it was so great. Wake up at 6 a.m. before work, watch the game. It's done by 8. Fast forwards all the adverts but I think it'd be a shame to lose that. Uh, but we, we are digressing. <laughs> it is um, 10 o'clock at night, so we probably should get this ended soon. <laughs> uh, week 18 is against the Los Angeles Rams at home. Yeah, I have that one for a win. I said earlier on, I think the, the Rams and 49ers have kind of got that over-familiarity, and I think we win this one easily. So I'll let you top up. I think I've got three losses on the season yeah, there. So you've got so... a 14 3 record. So you're on the third person... So the fourth person to come on the show, um, Ollie Kent has the current lowest record with five and uh, twelve with his Cardinals. Uh, next up is Sam Morgan with six and eleven for his Cardinals as well, and then second high, highest is Javan, who was on the I believe the podcast was you, I believe the Seahawks. Yeah, he right. was. Yeah, he was a good, good block. He was eleven and six, so you lead the way in our highest prediction so far with your fourteen and three record. Now that unless. Some team it has it's a crazy NFC that is more than likely to get in the mon overall seed. I, I find it very hard if you've got 14 wins, I'll be shocked if that isn't your first in either conference that, that should get you in the one overall seed. So yeah. that's the case, you go into the playoffs, 
first first round bye, home advantage in the divisional round. Um, so you get there. How far do you think this team will go in the playoffs? If the if we stay healthy, if luck can stay on our way, because that was one of the things I circled when you asked me what can the Niners do. I can see us going one step better than last year. She's gone to the Super Bowl with this roster, with the pieces we've added, with the coaching staff. And me and you joked. I was in your fantasy league last year and I had CMC as a Panther. And as soon as he was traded to the Niners, think how scary CMC is going to be with a full off season and he's learned the full playbook and he's got the full confidence of the team. And I don't even think we're going to use him as the cowbell running back. We've got Jordan Mason, which is going to probably have the bulk. I think CMC is going to be used like you saw last year. Kittle is looking good. I think we're going back to the Super Bowl. Um, I do think the AFC... Is stronger than the NFC at the moment. And I think that's reflected in my record. I think you said there's us, there's the Eagles, there's the Cowboys. Then there's a bit of a drop-off underneath. Obviously, the Packers have lost Rodgers. I'm interested to see what Jordan Love does. But yeah, I think we go into the playoffs. I think we beat the Cowboys at home because that's what we always do. And then I don't know who we play in the NFC Championship game. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you'd think it's the Eagles. But, you know, sometimes the seeding goes away where... You could play the Eagles in the divisional round. You know, if they have a tough ride, and they finishing, I don't know, the third seed or even the fourth seed by chance. You know, they're in a tough division. It could, it could happen. So, um, in terms of that, though, if you make it all the way, um, and I, I reckon there'll be a lot of you trying to get to Vegas. But if you know, if you get to see Bowl, who would you predict from the AFC that you would face? Is there a team in mind you'd have that you think that if you were to make it, you'd be playing? I think at the moment it will be the Chiefs. And I know most people watching the NFL now are getting frustrated. Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, for me, they're the standard bearers. They're the last year's champions. They played well enough for me to to show that they could be back again. Um, I know the Chiefs fans have been very bullish. I would say it would be, I'm looking at the Chiefs, I'm looking at the Bills, I'm looking at the Bengals. And then underneath, you make these connections in this crazy game. And I look out for the Dolphins' results because of you. And I think it'd be interesting to see what youth could do. Um, Obviously, McDaniel's had a full season. Can Tua be healthy? But at the moment, I believe it would be the Chiefs and 49ers. I think Vegas agree with me at the moment. But before we finish off, Lee Gowland looked at the prices for the Super Bowl in Vegas next year. And it was like £40,000 just for a hotel room, let alone your flights and right. it's going to be crazy prices over there and he looked at one like the week after and the same hotel room was like $700 but because it was the Super Bowl and then you imagine the tickets and the, I mean he went out there for the draft last year when he announced the Warmack pick and he said it was party central it was crazy can you imagine a Super Bowl in Vegas I mean I know they've just won the NHL Stanley Cup and the parade looked pretty good from what I've seen but at the moment I would say Chiefs 49ers are the two at the top, that would probably give a good Super Bowl. I can't believe those prices. I mean, remember last year, I was just out of curiosity looking at, um, you know, Arizona. I found their BB for like 600 quid. Yeah. So for that, you know, it's like that. I thought that'd be the BB fine. So maybe, I mean, that could be a case where it could be miles away from where we're going. Um, But I know a friend of the show, Luke Campbell, who I was on a podcast was regularly called the Hair Dry Treatment, a football podcast. Um, We've always said that if his Bears and the Dolphins play we're going no matter what that's our agreement that if ever they meet in Super Bowl you know, it could happen in a few years you never know that's our plan to go that's but obviously um I, I think I, even if it happens I don't think I'll be wanting paying 40 grand I think no, that's no. way I mean again what was funny before we finish off he looked at it on his booking.com and he got an email offering him 10% off if he booked <laughs> there and then it was like cheap price but if we do get there the Niners hosted the NFC Championship game at Ireland Road last year. And I think if the Niners got to the Super Bowl, I think they would look at putting an event on. Um, and I think they are focusing on the south of the country this year. So that that would be awesome. But like you said, if, you're, if your team gets there, I know when the Rams won it a couple of years ago, my friend Mike looked at going over and the flights were reasonable, the hotel was reasonable, but then the ticket for the game. And he's only a newish NFL fan. And he was like, I don't think I can sell this to the missus. I think he was looking at like eight or 9,000 pounds just for a ticket. But I'm talking, he looked maybe it's a week before you know, to get get the Super Bowl ticket. But if the Niners got there, I maybe just have to speak to the missus and try and convince her. But price-wise, mate, I think it's out of most normal fans' budget, to be honest. I think it's that's kind of thing where you have to, you have to rely on either a lottery win or winning some sort of competition. Um, that's the only way you can do it because 
Well, actually, you know, friend of the show, Brad Simcox, that had that. You know, cheese fan went to Miami. Um, he went there just to go there for the day, and then he end, and just go for experience and atmosphere. Ends up winning some free tickets, so you never know. You could go there. Um, and I mentioned Luke. He went last year. Um, he went for a. His boss is actually an ex NFL player. Uh, I forget whether I can say his name or not, but um, so I think those kind of things is how you get in. I don't think a regular person who you know isn't a millionaire, I think, will find it very hard to get tickets. I think that's you know with the UK connection, you know, you guys got quite a good one with the 49ers. You never know; they could give out maybe twenty or thirty tickets to. It's like we're hoping for fifty tickets to go watch the Dolphins in Frankfurt, but I think for Super Bowl, I think you guys have got a good connection with the team. I think there's a chance. Especially with the Leeds thing as well. So, yeah, I think that would be your best bet. I don't think you'll be able to get it through paying for one. <laughs> no, no. But like you said, ho- hopefully that, that that connection pays dividends. And like you said, Nicholas McGee, who's a good friend of ours, he's, he writes for Gridiron. He was actually at the Super Bowl last year covering, and I know that's a dream of yours to be able to cover an event. Could you imagine, oh, Paul, I can't do a pod with you this week, buddy, because I'm just flying out to cover the Super Bowl for whatever publication. That would be awesome, Andy. And if anyone's going to do it, man, when he's on you, I think oh. you could be the one in the future to do that. Thank you. Mate. Well, I actually had work experience plan with Gridiron, and then um, the guy who organised it left the company, so I never got that chance. But you know, I've had some good experiences. But I'm hoping that yeah, that's my dream. That's my dream one day that I can just be at one. And you know, I've had a few friends of podcasts that were doing commentary for Talk Sport. Ollie Wilson was there. What is Eagles team involved in as well? So you know, there's people I know that have been to it. Um, you know, Nat Coombs, who I, I work on his show, he's been a lot of times. So yeah, hoping more. That's my dream. Champs League final, Wembley next year, Super Bowl next year. That's a dream. <laughs> I'm good. But that is where we're going to end the podcast. Um, so thank you, Paul, for coming on for this bumper episode. I appreciate your time, especially how late it is as well. Oh, you're welcome. Spoiler alert, my family are downstairs watching Love Island. So when oh, you reached out and said, can you do a pod? I was like, as long as it's between nine and whatever time <laughs> that rubbish finishes, we're good to go, buddy. But I've had a blast. I know we've probably gone a lot longer than expected, but I always enjoy talking football with yourself. I enjoy the connection we have off the podcast. I know we message and we DM and we follow each other on social media. And I'm just looking forward to the season. And like I said, we will get you on Let's Talk Sport. And I will ask you the questions and you can be the guest for once. And that'll be great to hook that up, buddy. But definitely. Uh, it, 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 anywhere I can to avoid editing, I'm all for it. So, uh, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that is the end of our San Francisco 49ers season preview with Paul Hope of 49er Faithful UK and Let's Talk Sports. I've been your host, Andy. This has been Paul. And we'll see you guys for our next season preview, which is going to be... That's a little bit. See you guys then. <laughs> <laughs>